Long before we started the church, we wanted to come up with a mission statement that would adequately describe our goal and what we wanted to do. And Katie and I prayed about it, and we landed on this mission statement of reaching people with the life-giving and life-changing message of Jesus. And I remember we came up with that statement long before we knew the location, long before we even knew what the church was gonna be called because that was gonna be the heartbeat of what we were starting this church for. I remember when Matt told me that he felt God was calling him to start a church, I was completely on board, just straight from the get-go, and I knew our two kids at the time, Liv and Luke, were gonna be excited too. We got out a big map, and we were trying to figure out where we were gonna start the church and we circled a bunch of different cities and locations, but God kept on bringing us back to the Inland Empire. And with so many new people moving in and such a great opportunity near Los Angeles, we knew that this was the area that God was leading us and we were excited about getting started. I saw a Facebook ad and, uh, and I don't usually check Facebook ads. It was just one of those things. But I think we're in, in a time in our lives where we were looking for a church. It was an ad for an interest meeting. The church was, in, not, was not even formed yet. I remember our very first interest meeting. We were excited about having an official first gathering and Bible study to cast the vision and talk about what we wanted to do in the Inland Empire. We had an interest meeting every month and we were preparing for what we knew God could do. It was about time to start having our interest meetings. So I started calling around different areas and I found N7 Creamery. It looked really cool and I'm like, this would be the perfect place to have our interest meeting. We came together and about 15 people showed up and it was so fun to be able to cast the vision and just talk about what God had put on our hearts uh, in starting this new church. There was like a buzz in the air and it was so much fun just talking to people and seeing why they were there and also kind of feeling them out like, are you gonna be staying here? Are you just come, coming to support us? Or do you wanna be a part? And it was fascinating at the end of the night to look through the different cards that we collected and some of the people really did check, I wanna be a part of Rock Hill. And, uh, it means a lot to Kate and I that you guys come out and show interest. Uh, uh, that's what this thing is all about, just in some capacity that you're interested in this new uh, church plan. We went home, we prayed about it, we talked about it, and. We met with Pastor Matt and, and Katie after, and that was it. We knew this was our place. Leading up to our very first service in January, we had tons of meetings um, before that. We met at Pastor Matt's house. I always wished that I kept a tally of how many people came into our house that first year, because it had to be hundreds, just different Bible studies and different events, and that was the only building that we had, so we used it to its fullest capacity. I remember sitting around uh, in those core team meetings, just planning and preparing for what God was gonna do uh, through this church. up on launch Sunday at Wayne Rubel Middle School and that was a fun place to be. We scraped off a lot of gum off of the cafeteria floor and so we would try to make it look as little like a middle school cafeteria as possible. I remember for that launch Sunday we arrived several hours before the service and we had a team of about a dozen guys that were helping unload the trailer and just bringing out pipe and drape and chairs and screens and speakers and audio equipment. We had some big speakers that were donated, borrowed. It was right before, maybe 10 minutes before the service, so I turn around just to go outside. People are coming in, and as soon as I turn, I hear a huge, loud bang. And I heard the loudest bang, and I didn't know what it was, and so we all ran in there, and one of the speakers fell on the floor. And I remember thinking, great, you know, we're off to a great start. That was the first service.
I remember having just feelings and wondering who's gonna show up, who's gonna be there, what's it gonna be like. There was so much preparation, so much anticipation, uh, and really just excitement going into the day. Honestly, looking back, I didn't know what I was really doing. <laughs> I was just trying to connect with people, and um, but it worked, and we had people from that very first Sunday that are still here today. There was just an atmosphere of expectation in the air. We knew that God was gonna do something special. And I remember that first day, and today is the first day uh, for Rock Hill Baptist Church, and we're looking forward again uh, to what God is gonna do. I remember preaching a sermon that day called this is just the beginning from John chapter 2 about the first miracle of Jesus in Cana. And I'm so thankful for a room filled with people that had faith believing that God was going to do the miraculous. I think that we always say this, but really the best is yet to come. And this new space is just going to be the launching pad for something greater that God is going to do. I don't think that we're going to stay here. I think that we're going to move on and have something bigger and better. God's going to just bless us. A growing church is always in transition. And over the first five years of our church, it seems like we've had many healthy transitions that were born out of necessity. One thing I love about our church is we're not afraid to dream big and we're a flexible church body. Like we will go wherever we need to go. I think we met in 11 different locations before we ended up in this one. We met at Center Stage Theater uh, for several weeks in downtown Fontana. God showed up, people got saved there. I remember we didn't have a place to meet and our city council member, John Roberts, uh, said that we could meet at City Hall. And so for several weeks, we met in the chambers of City Hall and declared the gospel right there in City Hall. And we met at Wayne Rubel Middle School, Heritage Intermediate School. We met in the parking lot at Jesse Turner Community Center. And at each location, there was just this expectancy that it didn't really matter where we were, we were believing that God was gonna meet with us and that lives were gonna be changed at every one of those locations. So Easter 2019, now that was an experience. One day I was listening to a podcast and the guy that started DoorDash told this story about how he went to the school that he was at and he used all of their printers and he printed 100,000 flyers with the school printers to pass out to get DoorDash started. Matt had an idea that we needed to hand out 100,000 flyers for the Easter egg launch. If he can do that for DoorDash, then we can do it for Easter Sunday at Rock Hill Church. I remember ordering 100,000 invitations for our Easter egg launch, which was going to be this Easter egg hunt where we launched eggs up into the sky and invited the community. Egg launch was really an eventful week. I remember earlier that week trying to build the launchers. <laughs> Three, two, one. We were building like catapults for the Easter egg launch and testing those. And I remember uh, pulling the catapult back, the Ready. slingshot and shooting it. And I remember it backfired and came back oh. and shot all the eggs at me. <laughs> oh! <laughs> and I remember I got together with Daniel and with Seth and with our team and I said, hey, uh, we're gonna pass out 100,000 invitations and everyone responded with, uh, let's, let's do this, let's go get this. Three, two, one. Yes! 
<laughs> did not go very far. We spent the better part of three weeks every day passing out flyers, leaving, I don't know how many stacks of flyers we left at Panda Express and <laughs> different fast food locations. Yeah. And we were thinking, <laughs> If 1% of these people, you know, amount of 100,000 show up, that'll be a huge win. Little did we know. The day rolled around, it was a Saturday. Before we were even finished setting up, there was almost 500 people just there waiting for this event to get started. It was so crowded that you couldn't even move. Like you literally couldn't even walk. We started launching the eggs just into the sky and just saying, well, whoever gets an egg is lucky. They will keep pushing. You know, the, the crowd got bigger and bigger, and it got scary. It got scary. Like, people were just trying to get the eggs, or nobody listened. I remember moms yelling at me because their kids didn't get any eggs. And I kept on going behind uh, the amphitheater and hiding behind the building with Seth so no one would yell at me. I remember Joanna, it was her first time ever serving, and I was like, she will never come back to our church because angry people were like yelling at her about their kids not getting Easter eggs. It was a disaster, but um, she came that Sunday and we laughed about it, and we still laugh about it. This We were all in this disaster together, and so I think that, that really built some camaraderie that weekend. We came out eventually, we had a service, and uh, we saw so many people pray to accept Christ that day, but definitely a day that we'll never forget. When we started 2020, we had a campaign that we were leading into as a church called the Whatever It Takes campaign. And we were excited because we were growing and we were going to two services and we had all of this momentum going into two services and we were praying and we started that uh, second service on March 8th, 2020. And it was a great day, both services filled. The very next Sunday, we couldn't meet. And it's been advised to me that we should uh, move our services to an online venue for this weekend. And so we're looking forward to having our first ever online service this Sunday at 10.30. That was when word of the coronavirus got out. And so we, just like every other church, started to pivot and figure out online services and how we were gonna live stream. It was fun for a couple of weeks and then it got old rather quickly. But it was awesome to see our church family stick with us through that time and show up on online services and show up to Zoom small groups and still believing that, that God was working in our church even in those online days and online moments. Some of my favorite memories of Rock Hill are the parking lot services that we had during coronavirus. No building would rent to us, we couldn't meet anywhere, and so we decided that we're just gonna show up in a parking lot, and we paid $250 a week just so we could use the parking lot. And we showed up, and we had the radio transmitter, and we were singing and preaching to the cars, and people were honking at us uh, to show their support. which was kind of fun for a few minutes and then it got old rather quickly, everyone honking at us all the time. It was just so fun to see the faith of our church in a parking lot. Everything stripped down. No fancy lights, no awesome dynamic worship experience, just a parking lot in super hot, 110 degree weather, California fires and smoke and ash uh, falling down on us but we were still singing, praising the Lord. People were still being saved. And uh, it's awesome to see people that are still plugged into our church that came to a parking lot. And we never even got to meet them face to face, but we saw their car and we waved at them and God was still working. So after meeting in the parking lot for about 12 weeks, we knew we really needed to find something because it was hard not being able to congregate together. And one particular Sunday was our Gaining Ground Sunday. And we were praying and planning and asking uh, God to open up a space for us to meet on, on a permanent uh, basis. And we prayed and we prayed and we came together in the parking lot at Jesse Turner Community Center and our church rallied together and gave a sacrificial one-time offering of above $50,000. And I remember just being filled with emotion, thanking God for doing a miracle in that parking lot. Everyone was blown away. It was, it exceeded what we were even expecting or hoping for, and it allowed us to get into this building. Sometimes people ask me, 
you know, what's your favorite thing about church planting or your favorite thing about being in a church plant? And the answer is always life change. The fact that the gospel transforms people from the inside out. I remember the first baptism service we ever did at Wayne Rubel Middle School in the lunchroom cafeteria. I remember the baptism overflowing and water being all over the cafeteria floor. And it's so awesome to see lives that have been changed and people that have been transformed by the power of the gospel. Rock Hill really has changed my life. I remember over five years ago just asking God to do something new in my life and just to, um, to use me in a way that was unexpected and new. And um, I'm so thankful Pastor Matt and Katie asked me to be a part of this team because it has been the greatest blessing in my life. We do experience miracles at Rock Hill. Um, one of the miracles I think was uh, this building that we're currently in and we got to be part of it. God has worked in such amazing, such amazing ways uh, in the last five years and I feel like we haven't even scratched the surface yet of what God wants to do in our church and through our church and in every single one of our lives. We're excited about being here. We've been part of it from the beginning and it's just so rewarding. As I pray about and consider what God has done, I am so excited about where we're going as a church, and I believe that more people are gonna be reached with the life-giving, life-changing message of Jesus. I believe that more families are going to be reunited and restored, more marriages strengthened, more children saved and baptized, teenagers being saved and making a difference. And I believe more than ever, we need the church to stand up and to boldly proclaim the gospel message. And I'm looking forward to how we're gonna be able to do that at our church for the years to come.